have Megan Scanlon, reigning world champion and now national back-to-back -back national champion in 63 kilo class. Um, Meg, to start off with, do you want to just give us a little summary of your day and how it went? <laughs> Um, sure. My day was interesting. Um, it definitely didn't go as I planned, but it was the day I needed and deadlift saved me. So that's a summary. <laughs> they saved me again. I, it really is. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't. I was thinking I would be able to hit it on my second deadlift, like if according to plan. Um, but when I started squatting, I had a feeling it was going to take all nine attempts. Um, I just didn't feel like as strong. You know what I mean? Like didn't feel like a strong day. So kind of after my first or sixth squat attempt, I probably had a good idea it was going to take nine. This is Bryce from CNN. Um, <laughs> I'm wondering what your body weight was like leading into the prep and if you felt like that was a factor. Sure. So I stay pretty close to 63, but I tend to like drop weight unintentionally when I get close to meat. So it's something I'm trying to get closer to 63 on weigh-ins. Um, better than world, still not great. Um, so that's kind of like my goal going forward is to get closer and closer to 63. This is Natalie from ESPN. <laughs> I noticed that you had the, you put in the American record on your third squat attempt mm. after a pretty tough 190. Did you have any intention of coming out for 191.5? Um, so after I took my 190, I knew I wasn't going to come out for my third, um, but my husband put it in, um, knowing that like a chip would help, but I was like, no, <laughs> one and a half kilos isn't worth what I'm going to have to do. I've done it before, <laughs> so I know what it's like, and I just knew it wasn't going to be worth it. Um, I know going into this, obviously the bench rules change. Um, how, how much of that affect your bench in this prep and what you end up taking? So, I mean, my bench has changed significantly. I know if someone's never seen me bench before, they probably still think I have a huge arch. Um, but I've changed, like, how much I arch, where I'm putting my feet, my grip width, and, like, my actual grip on the bar. And then I flare my elbows a lot. So there's been a lot of factors that I've changed. I'm definitely still getting used to it. Um, it wasn't a great bench day either, similar to squats in comparison to my meat prep. Mm -hmm. So you now get a ticket to the World Championship and you get to watch the Sheffield with a little bit more ease and comfort. Are you going to be watching, are you going to be watching some of your potential competitors and seeing their performances, or do you mainly just focus on yourself? I'll definitely watch Sheffield. I mean, I like watching the big meets. Um, as we get closer, like, I definitely don't pay attention on Instagram, but I like watching the big meets. All right, so Meg, you're known as being a huge bencher and that's kind of your big weapon, but lately it's like your squat and your deadlift have really coming around. What's been happening and how confident are you, you know, in your squat and your deadlift progression coming into Worlds? I feel very confident about them. Um, I've, I used to have a big squat and now it's coming back. Um, I've always kind of had a big bench, um, but it's really my deadlift, my getting back to where my squat was and my deadlift progression, I think that's allowed me to be a lot more competitive the past year. And one follow up to that is just like, how has it been working with Kelly Mann? I mean, amazing. <laughs> um, I've made a lot of progress and I know that we still have a lot of progress to make, so it's exciting. All right, yes, it's very exciting. All right, any more questions? After a big competition like this, do you jump right back into training or are you taking a little time off? You know, how are you thinking about the transition from here to the World Championship? Mm. Um, I usually don't take that much time off just because I like training. <laughs> um, but I'll ease back into it and then get back into a training block. All right. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, congrats. Yeah. Thanks, guys. All right, Meg, we'll let you go eat food. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. See you at the barbecue. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thanks, guys.
Bryce Lewis, the 93 kilo national champion. And um, we've got Natalie Hansen, his handler and wife. And Bryce, you want to start off by kind of summarizing your day? Or Natalie as well, you can brag on your lifter. I'll let, I'll let him go. Yeah. Um, it was it's such a mixed bag. So, yes, I won. Um, but the goal going into today was really to hit that Carpino, which we had planned based on attempts on the second deadlift. And I was cramping the entire day. Um, nutrition had been like a big factor for, for this prep. Felt like everything was going well. And then today my body betrayed me and we're still trying to figure out what happened. But uh, I was cramping from attempt number one to attempt number nine. And uh, that was just really frustrating. Yeah, we, um, we played whack-a-mole on body cramps for seven attempts. And then by the eighth attempt, uh, it was really just a full body, full body, uh, pretty much shut down. <laughs> um, I thought that, so like Bryce said, the only goal for today was uh, punching that ticket to Malta. And we understand that with this being, you know, three or four weeks before the Sheffield, uh, whatever Bryce puts up here is really just kind of a, a target for the three 93s from um, the U.S. that are competing at the Sheffield. And so there was no real value in hitting anything below that 870 kilo total um, because we're not going to get to that round of alternates for the 93. So that's why we loaded it even after, you know, him not feeling great today. We we went for it anyway. And, uh, yeah, it just wasn't wasn't the day we wanted after seven attempts. Mm. If, if the meet was seven attempts, he would have – he would have won. He would have blown it out of the water. <laughs> um, first of all, Bryce and Natalie, congratulations on your first uh, PA National Championship. Um, Thank you. I've suffered from cramps quite a bit as well, and I know how debilitating and, and how they can create decrements in performance. And I know that you're big into psychology. What sort of mental you know, thinking or maybe perhaps techniques did you use when these, you're overwhelmed with these cramps and you're trying to at this simultaneously fill your head with positive things to, to go out and execute? Yeah, well, today frustration and cursing was my main tool. We laughed. Too. Um, we did. We laughed a little bit. It's just how ridiculous all of this was. It just felt so out of my control. I mean, I was drinking fluids. Let's drink some more fluids. Let's, let's add electrolytes. Let's eat something. Nothing was working. Um, we tried some deep breathing toward the end. Um, there was some effect of just kind of like thinking, well, I just, I have to do this. So I'm just going to give everything I have. And if I tap out my body's resources and, and that's all that's left, I have nothing left to give and, and I can at least take some comfort in that. So that was something that was going through my head. Um, any mental strategy I had kind of broke down on that second deadlift. Um, after my first deadlift, I was laying on the floor and couldn't find a position where anything would stop cramping. And it's just like, I'm thinking like, how am I going to even get out on the platform and try this if I can't get my arm to straighten? And so I just, I said, I'm just going to go out there and give everything I have. And, and I did. And it just, you know, it wasn't enough today. Uh, you really showed a lot of heart going out there. Um, it was really inspiring to watch because I saw you in the warm-up room cramping so hard and you almost couldn't even walk off the platform and stuff. And, and you really showed a lot of mental toughness going out there. Um, so, Matt Gary, you stole my question. But um, coming into this meet, how was training going coming into this? And how are you feeling as far as, like, your your chances of hitting that qualifying total? I felt on top of the world going to this competition. Um, I kept a lot of my heavy lifts off of social media just for the chance that I might – I might, you know, keep one of the 93s from joining me here and maybe saying, you know, I'm just going to go do the Sheffield. Um, but I hit a 325 squat in training. Um, I I benched 215 earlier. I've benched a bunch of times at 205. I pulled 370. Like 900, I was thinking, okay, well, I'm not going to do that here, even though that's my training total because I've been training, I don't know, four kilos heavier or something like that. But we were pretty confident in the plan. We yeah. thought we were being pretty conservative. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I, I thought 870 was a lock. I mean, 880 was a lock. Um, that 870 would be a promising second attempt, and we could just have some fun on the third. <clears throat> um, and and yeah, Bryce has trained. You've trained heavier than 93 for the most part. But um, I mean, it's his recomp on meet day was great too because by the time we were he was benching, he was 97 kilos. Mm -hmm. um, he stepped on the scale just out of curiosity and uh, weighed 97. So it wasn't. It wasn't um, 
yeah, it was just something funky with something going on in his body. But yeah, yeah, it was, it was still a, a good day. It I was mean, an improvement for my last yeah, competition. Last competition in, yeah. in November, it was a 835 or 837 and a half total. Mm-hmm. And he beat that today on a pretty awful day. So mm-hmm. still on the upward trajectory, just we, we put this bar at 870 out there and failed to reach that. So it, then it feels like everything else is kind of doesn't matter. But mm-hmm. realistically, he's still getting stronger at 93. And I think that's really important. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the sky's the limit. I mean, you've gone into the 900s many times at different weight classes and stuff, so I was really excited to see what you might do at 93. Mm-hmm. And I'm still really excited. Are you going to stay at 93? Yeah, the, the plan is to figure out what happened, work on some nutritional stuff, maybe train a kilo or two lighter, and, you know, find the next competition, figure out any qualification stuff if possible, but otherwise just kind of keep marching forward. Awesome. Probably a trial run meet too. Yeah, Test, yeah. test out the, n- the new method. I'd yeah. love to see you. Know, if, if that 93 spot goes to someone else um, at the NAPFs in Cayman Islands. Mm-hmm. So let's I forgot go, about that. Let's go yeah. yeah, that's a possibility too. Yeah. When is that? It's in August. Uh, August. August. Early August, I think. All right. Okay. So. It's warm. <laughs> let's go to Cayman Islands. August is warm. <laughs> All right. Uh, any other questions? All right. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us. Yep. Really appreciate awesome. you. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. Cool. Awesome. We've got junior superstars, 69 kilo Carolyn Connor and 83 kilo Alex Sidor. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so first thing I want to do is let's talk about Carolyn. She just came off the platform yep. and uh, Alex, you handled her. So first thing, if you guys want to kind of just give a summary of Carolyn's day and, and Alex, this would be a good chance for you to brag on your lifter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she did uh, really well today. Um, we came into this meet squatting 177 and a half, benching 90 and deadlifting 405. but. Due to the day, we just took what was there on the day. So she squatted, she matched her PR on squat and then bench, um, she benched 85, which was good. 87 and a half was there, we just took a little too, bit, too big of a jump on to 90. And then for Delft, she hit 175, which was pretty good. You know, she's happy about that. Um, we just have some things to work on. We're gonna be switching days around for her SPD days, um, switching around volume, stuff like that. And just working on a little bit more technique for Delft to really like refine that. and. You know, just get the better technique of deadlift. Yeah. First of all, congratulations on your performance. Thank you. I always like to ask lifters this. Uh, your third spot, first of all, was epic. <laughs> <laughs> and so you could really, I hope you felt the energy in the room. Oh, I did. Yeah. It's the only thing that got me and through that. This may sound crazy, but what, what was kind of going through your mind there as you're, you know, kind of reaching the sticking point and transitioning? you know, to the bar where it's almost at a standstill. Yeah, so the noise definitely helped. Um, but I also have a very, like, all-or-nothing mindset. Like, I said to myself, and I think Ryan said it too, like, I was going to die before I didn't get that squat because <laughs> squat's my favorite lift. So I'm very proud of my performance with squat. Um, and I just wanted to make myself proud throughout the entire day. So I'm not upset uh, with my failed third bench and third deadlift because I made myself very proud on squat and I added a lot of kilos to my total. So um, overall, I made myself proud and I know what I need to work on and I hope we can adjust that for junior nationals yep. and show up where it matters at juniors. Yep. I noticed that second deadlift got away from the body a little bit. I was wondering if that was a technical error or um, just like part of your training style and it was just a hard lift. Yeah, that has been a common technical flaw that I've had for so long that I can't break for some reason. 
Um, I also train at my college gym, so we use like bumper plates and a different bar. So it's just like when I adjust to kilos on deadlifts, it does get affected a little bit, um, but it's definitely something I need to work on. Uh, yeah, that is like a very common, yeah. and we see common technical delf, issue. Like, when she's doing reps, she's a much better rep delfter. And yeah. her second rep, she always gets into a better position. Yeah. So yeah, the, the biggest thing is we have to just focus on that first rep. Exactly. Yeah. The first rep, I can't wedge and it goes away a little bit. So just need to adjust a little bit more. So, Carolyn, being a junior and being out there lifting, you know, in the same class with Claire and with Chelsea, you know, Chelsea's a bench national champion and went to Worlds last year and out there with the reigning world champion 63s, Megs Cameron. What was it like just being in the warm-up room with those women and being on the same platform with them? Well, first of all, incredible lifters. They're definitely lifters I look up to. And... It's such an honor to be able to put myself in that position, and it's something that I'm very grateful to be able to do. Um, it definitely inspires me to do better, and it definitely holds me more accountable. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a very big yeah. blessing, for sure. Yeah. All right, any more questions for Carolyn? All right, if not, then we'll move on over to Alex. Um, so, Alex, you, you, know, you were in the, one of the late classes with one of the biggest battles here, yeah. and um, you were kind of sitting comfortably in third. And how did that feel? I mean, just kind of like, you were, were you just on cruise control all day or what? Yeah, it was okay. I just, um, going to the meet, I just got a little sick. So I had a little food poisoning going to the meet. So I wasn't feeling the best, um, just throwing up a little bit. So, you know, I came in, took what I had on the day, and, you know, just, that's basically all I could say. Like, just really had to take what I had, to de take what I had on the day um, on squat. Bench was, had to be adjusted because of the new bench rules. So I had to retake my opener. Um, and that's going to be fixed for junior nationals, making sure we're, you know, technically dialed in and, you know, making sure we're hitting IPF, you know, um, elbow depth. And then, yeah, for Delft, we just took what's, you know, what's there and then tried to pull myself into third again with the last Delft, but just wasn't there on the day. Okay. Yeah. So you finished in fourth? Fifth. Fifth. Yeah. Okay. But if I pulled the last Delft, I would have okay, been third. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. And the same, same question, I mean, you're out there with Deuce Gruden, you know, he was a junior world champion before. Now yeah. He's in, national champion he's got one of the biggest totals in your weight class by anyone what yeah. was it like just you know competing against him and sean jim yeah it was awesome i mean i've competed against sean twice now before you know amazing competitor and you know first time competing against deuce like amazing both amazing competitors just seeing them in the warm room seeing them locked in in their element just you know something i could just always model um after um you know it's just amazing do you uh do you see these guys as adversaries or so, you know, role models to look up to, you know, when you're back in there with them, what's your mindset as you think about them? I mean, on the day, I would be, I would say, like, I want to beat them. You know, obviously, today was obviously pretty far off, and I'm working towards that, you know, getting there eventually. But I do see them off the platform as role models, as people, as inspirations. Um, I want to eventually get there. And eventually, you know, become a IPF Junior World Champion, IPF Open Champion. You know, later down the line, just keep grinding it. You know, day after day, week after week, year after year, and just being consistent. This is a question for both of you guys, but as younger lifters, do you guys see yourself staying in the same weight class or gradually, potentially moving up to the next weight class as you gain muscle mass? You can I answer? Yeah, I'll go first. Um, this is probably my last year at the 83, just because the cuts have been kind of rough on me. Um, so I'm gonna do last year 83 Junior Nationals, and then if I qualify for um, worlds, I'll do 83 that wor worlds, and then I'll do 93 next year, and then I'll probably be 93 for a while before I maybe move up again. But definitely 93 coming soon, just because of cuts have been kind of rough on me. Um, this is my first full year powerlifting, so when we decided to make the decision on what weight class I would compete in, I picked a weight class that I could grow into. So last year I was pretty light for 69. I, I didn't have to cut for the meets or anything. Um, and I'm very glad with my decision to stay in a weight class that I can grow into because I feel like if I were to pick a weight class a little bit lower, I would be limiting my potential, especially because I'm so young. This is the time to really add as much weight as I can to my total. Um, so I see myself competing in this weight class for, you know, the next few years. I'm very happy with this weight. So, so it sounds like both of you are going to be heading to junior nationals in, yes. in Scottsdale. So taking what you've kind of learned from today, and I know that's still fresh, so you, it may require some reflection, but what, what might you change or, or alter going into this next training period prepping for, for junior? We were actually talking yeah. about this like already. We're both so like excited to get going. Um, for me personally, um, 
you know, we see the flaws, we see the, we see where the strengths are, we see the weak, where the weaknesses are, so we know what to adjust. Um, but yeah, I mean, just keep going as best as we can and keep giving our all for training and, you know. Yeah, she's been making great, happen. she's making great progress. So like, just keep you yeah. on that, keep you on that same train and just keep working on that. She had a 37 half kilo today on yeah. her total. So yeah. that's really good. So we just got to keep <laughs> doing that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. For me, I just need to, the three things I need to work on is just my, my weight cut, uh, my deadlift grip and my bench. Just got to work on my bench. Yeah. Uh, my squats, once it, if it's at, you know, peak level, it's, it's pretty good. Um, mm-hmm. I just got to work on my bench and then delve grip yeah we took this meet very like low pressure we just wanted to see what was there how we were handling you know the new weight we've added to totals and everything like that so it was a, just a low pressure meet uh, yeah. just to see how we would perform for the juniors because that's where it really matters to us yeah um but yeah i think we're both pretty happy with our performances given the circumstances <laughs> for everything so yeah. can't complain too yeah. much that's awesome all right we got a comment from bbc over here <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess just along those same lines, do you have any goals, specific goals for junior nationals? Um, any predictions, you know? <laughs> yeah, mine's just a win. <laughs> mine's just a win. <laughs> just a win. Uh, um, I always say I just want to make myself proud. You know, like whatever total I get, I just want to be happy with it and happy with the work that I've put in. Um, but, I mean, I would like to break a 1,000 pounds at Junior Nationals. I'm getting so close, and I can, like, just feel it. So I would really like that goal. Um, but, like I said, just make myself proud. Yeah. All right. yeah, thank, you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Awesome. That will let you go. All See right. You. All right, we've got the 69 kilo superstar, Claire Zai. She finished in second place today, but to start off with, we'd like to just have you give a summary of your day. Okay, Uh, so today was a little tougher than I wanted it to be. It uh, was not my best performance, but that happens. And uh, I ended up totaling 185 for squat, 120 for bench, and 202 for deadlift. So yeah, not the best day, but could have been worse. Um, I guess I'll just start. Um, first of all, congr- congratulations on coming Thank in second. You. I mean, coming in second in the national championships um, is, is, is always a, a, a high level and I think a high ceiling to attain. I know that you had aspirations of doing a little bit better and things that happened uh, to break your way. Um, the national record coming into this meet for the squat was 180.5. Yes. Um, was there any thought given to potentially using a chip on one of your attempts <laughs> to kind of gain some strategic advantage, or what was the rationale behind that? Yes. So the because we knew that I had 185 uh, pretty solidly, that was a, an attempt that we weren't too worried about. We decided to just go ahead and jump right over it. Uh, in hindsight, I think taking a chip would have been the – correct uh thing to do but um hindsight is 2020 so um ultimately 185 is a a pretty good squat for me and uh if 190 had been there that would have been even better (laughs) so yeah claire no um we've been talking before the competition just about some of the stuff that you hit in training totally of course you know like any lifter that sets up certain expectations of what you do in competition how looking at hindsight of things do you square difference between training and competition? Are you making any decisions about how to change peaking strategies or training mm-hmm. or anything like mm-hmm. that uh, as a result? You know, in the last 10 minutes, I haven't thought about it too much. <laughs> uh, um, but I think for me, knowing the prep that I had, knowing that it was uh, had its own set of struggles, that going 
forward there might be some changes uh but also I just think I didn't have the best day and there's sometimes nothing you can do about it and sometimes you just have to recognize that it wasn't there that day so yeah Claire do you mind telling us about how your prep was coming oh into yeah um so my prep was the uh, what did I name it the other day yeah, the the prep of Murphy's Law, Murphy's First Law. So if anything could have gone wrong, it did go wrong. I got sick like two weeks out, like terrible stomach flu. I had shoulder pain and back pain through the whole prep. So I was juggling a lot of variables to try and get that to be ready to go by meet day. Given the numbers that I was able to do in training, it was reasonable. The numbers that we attempted today and things just didn't really work out the way I wanted them to. And uh, maybe in the future I won't have back pain. <laughs> so it's, I think pain is really complicated in that we end up trying to push past it, especially for these like big meets. And sometimes it inhibits the ability to train. And I think had prep gone differently, maybe the meet would have gone differently, but I think it was just a bad day. Everyone has them. So what do you, what were you thinking about as you went out for your third deadlift after you missed out? Oh, second? yeah. Um, my thought process was <laughs> you can pull things out of your butt all the time. You do it all the time. Um, so now is the time to do that skill. And uh, at that point on third deadlifts, I'm really focusing on just letting my body take over. My body knows what to do. It's done it before. And trying to not get in my own way. So just letting letting my body do what it knows. So I know um, previously you were a 72 and now you're a 69. Mm -hmm. um, does that mean that you have a pretty sizable cut that you do for competitions? Yes. Or are you walking around later? Okay. Yeah, so I end up cutting. Um, I walk around 73, 74, cut down to 69. The cut isn't too bad typically. Um, I had to cut to 67 once and that was definitely too much. Um, and then 75, I'm super comfortable. So uh, it's a possibility that that's something that changes going forward, but um, maybe, yeah. I just don't know. Yeah. Again, I've had so much time to <laughs> make new plans in the last 10 minutes, so. Uh, very few level or very few lifters of your level of uh, assurance and uh, almost like you're able to coach yourself mentally in a lot of mm -hmm. ways. Where does that come from? How are you able to stay so level through the highs and the lows? Yeah. Uh, so I have a long history of competing in sports. I played soccer for 14 years and then that was a pretty high level. And then actually where a lot of my confidence comes from is from diving, where the performance is not only judged, but is instantaneous as well, just like powerlifting. And so that I've worked on a lot. And then I've also, I work with a therapist to help me manage some of those like negative thoughts and work through the, the challenges that happen in training both mentally and then I'm able to take those ideas away and work on them independently as well. So it's a whole team. I have a coach who helps, my therapist who helps, um, a support system that I can bounce ideas off of. And so it's not just me. It's a whole, it's, it's a village. Yeah. yeah. So. Likewise, even though as level-headed as you are, sometimes it seems like you're able to flip the switch and go into like animal mode. Oh, well. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it the yelling I don't know <laughs> it's the growling okay got it got it yeah um yeah there's another another level and I don't actually know how to describe accessing it um but I am able to like drop down and let my my not instincts but like body do the thing it's supposed to do and turn off the active brain that has the doubts and the fears. And I guess what comes out is the animal. So <laughs> the growling. Uh, I mean, w when you're in that mode, yeah. are you, is it anger that you're trying to channel or what's, what kind of emotion are you feeling when you're going, going into animal mode? I love that term. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's some anger there. The thing that really drives me to power lift and to do well on the platform 
is supporting women in sports. And one of the things I, I think about is the inequity and biases and uh, kind of like barriers that women face both in sports as coaches as athletes um just generally kind of socially the the um the barriers we face and so um i think about those inequities and those those challenges so that's part of it and then part of it is just there there isn't thought so that's one of it but that's part of it but it's mostly just um, trying to trying to think about the women and the people who are marginalized in this space and and creating a path for them forward, going forward. And another, another follow-up on that yeah. because I think you're just one of the most interesting directors. I've seen you up close a few times now. Oh, thank you. And um, in, like like what people see out on the platform, um, like in this animal mode that we're calling it, <laughs> you describe how you are backstage because I'm terrifying. <laughs> what are your strategies backstage? Because, mm-hmm. because you have a you. I've never seen another lifter like you. Yeah, so I'm my my focus is creating a space for myself where I am the only thing in that space. So I turn my chair around because I find other lifters incredibly distracting. Um, so other people like bouncing around and bobbing, I hate watching. So I turn my chair to either face a wall or face a face a tarp or just not other people, and then. Um, I use breath work to kind of like center myself and focus on whatever is going on in the moment. Um, And then I use a mantra to really focus all of my energy at that point in time into what I'm doing. And that is, it comes from a movie. It's called, it is, where are you here? Uh, What time is it now? And what are you this moment? So, and I just repeat that over and over again. And I stare very intensely at, whatever is in front of me so or I will yeah and then I also (laughs) I also read before we start lifting because it takes my brain off of what I need to do and lets me just exist in the moment until I have to focus on what I'm doing so um will you tell us about the genres of music that you're listening to throughout the course of um it's mostly like women's empowerment style um or country music yeah, so those don't match, typically. No. Yeah, they're very different. So I know that things are fresh in your mind and you okay. just came off the battlefield, so to speak. What's, what's next for Claire's Eye? Uh, well, I will continue to compete, and depending on how nominations go, because technically no one got an automatic nomination from the 69s, I'm assuming they will take Chelsea because she won and she had an incredible meet. Um, and she was the better lifter today. Um, but depending on how that is sorted, uh, hopefully Worlds would be next for me. Um, but away from the platform, I'm applying to medical school. That's my big goal right now is to enter that arena. And I'll continue to compete, but the big goal is to be a doctor. So, yeah. All right. Well, with that, we'll let you, uh, Thank you. get out of here. Thank yeah. you so much for coming. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was cool. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs>